What is up everyone? Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can install Enzo, which essentially is a permanent modification for your Vita. So if you guys have been following any of my tutorials before, you probably would have learned by now that all the videos I've done have included modifying the Vita with a soft modification, which essentially means once you reboot your PlayStation Vita at any point, it's going to have to basically be run again, meaning you have to go and open Hencore or Nkaku, whichever version you're running, to get the modification to work again. That is known as a soft modification. And so essentially does it permanently. So it's a permanent modification, meaning once you install it onto your Vita, every time you restart your system, it's going to be automatically loading into the modified version. And it also opens up some possibilities for you to use some plugins that are not compatible with other firmwares or with other, um, modifications as well, if that makes sense. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because a lot of you guys asked questions or pretty much just wondered why I always decided to go with 3.68 instead. And largely it's because of compatibility issues with different games and stuff like that. But because the request is coming from you guys a lot, I decided to go ahead and make this video and do a tutorial. Now again, this is gonna be completely beginner level tutorial guys. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to get this stuff done and how to do it. So first off, you're gonna to need to have a PlayStation Vita. Could be the slim one like this, or it could be the original OLED fat one like this. Or actually, you can also do this modification with a PS TV as well. Doesn't matter what firmware you guys are on. Now, a couple of things I want to put up as disclaimers. If you're going to be using an OLED Vita or the original one, you will need to have a memory stick. The original PS Vita memory stick. It doesn't matter what size it is. You just need some kind of memory stick because it needs to have some storage in there to copy over the files while you're doing the modification. If you have the slim, you don't need that uh, memory stick as well. And same goes for the PS TV as well. Only with the original OLED ones, you will need a memory stick. Second, you will obviously need a data transfer cable for each one of the devices, except the PSTV, which you can use an FTP server to do as well. I'm not gonna be doing the steps for an FTP server. However, if you guys use FileZilla and you're able to connect with it, it's pretty much the same process throughout of copying the files to the respective folders and all the steps are pretty much the same. And the last thing that we need to get out of the way is the firmware that you're gonna be on. So as of this point, every firmware that's been made for the PS Vita has been modified and pretty much hacked at this point. So there isn't anything that's out there that cannot be modified. So if you're already on 3.60, then it is very simple. And I'm gonna show you guys another video on that separately in another time. Hopefully I'll make a separate video for that to show you how to do it for 3.60. This video is geared towards folks that are gonna be running on 3.65 and only 3.65. If you are not on 3.65, then you'll be able to get down to 3.65 very easily. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get up to 3.73, go up to the latest firmware. We're gonna modify that firmware. We're then going to downgrade to 3.65. And then from there, we're going to install Enzo and do the modifications to that software as well. So this is key for 3.65 users only. If you're already on 3.65, you can skip past towards the end of the video and go to the part where we start doing the modification. I'll leave some notes in the description below with timestamps, that way you guys know which part of the video that starts. But anyways, before we go ahead and jump into the video, let's get a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVG Mall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to proceed to doing the modification and getting this up. So in the example that I'm gonna be using today is going to be my slim version. This one had a original firmware of 3.65 on it, but currently I'm running 3.73. I will see you guys over on the computer and show you what files we're going to need and how we're going to proceed with the setup. So see you guys there. Okay guys, so the very first thing we want to do even before we jump onto our computer is make sure that we are running the latest firmware on our Vita. That's excluding if you're already on 3.65. Again, if you're already on 3.65, you can go ahead and skip past this part. If you're not, if you're on 3.68, 6.9 or 7 or anything other than 3.65, then go ahead and update. So you wanna verify that after you've updated that your software is the latest one, which is 3.73. So I'm gonna go down to my system, system information, and you could see I'm running 3.73 in this version. Once you have that done, go ahead and exit out. Now we're gonna 
go over to our computer and we're gonna download some files in preparation for the modification. All right guys, so we are on our computer. Now at this point, what we're gonna do is the very first things are to start downloading some of the files that we need. And obviously we also have to enable our view options. So a lot of you guys have had trouble with this in the past and I think I may have not covered this in the most bit of detail, I guess, but I'm gonna make this super simple. So if you're using a Windows machine, it doesn't matter which one you're on, press the Windows key on your keyboard and start typing File Explorer Options till you see this one come up here. Hit Enter, go over to the tab that says View, and I want you to scroll down and make sure that your options look similar to mine. Okay, so where it says hide extensions for known file types, leave that unchecked, hide empty drives, leave that unchecked, um, hide protected operating system files, leave that one unchecked. And I think that is the main one that you wanna make sure is unchecked. Go ahead and click okay. Now, for some reason, you don't see these type of two things here, like I have my desktop.ini. Um, that's also very simple. It's because you can go into view and just disable hidden items like this, like I just did right there, or enable. Anyways. We're going to keep this enabled for now. So now that you have your view enabled, let's go and create an, a folder to make sure everything stays nice and neat. So go ahead, right click, create a new folder. Uh, there we go. And we'll call this Vita Enzo Mod. Okay, call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. All right, now I'm going to put a link in the description for each one of these things, each one of these files, and I'll briefly explain which e what each one of these files is. Sorry, I'm like choking on myself. All right, so the first one we're gonna need is we're going to need the actual Enzo file. So let's go ahead and download enzo.vpk. Go ahead and just click on this and the link, and it'll start downloading there on the bottom, okay? The next one we need is Final H on Core version 1.92. And make sure you get version 1.92 because that's the one that's going to support your freshly updated 3.73 Vita. Go ahead and click on that and start downloading that as well. We're also going to need the latest Modoru. Now make sure you get Modoru version 2.1. Uh, again, everything is going to be in the description with links, so you shouldn't screw this up. But if you guys screwed this part up, you're going to break your Vita, so be very careful. Just make sure it's version 2.1. Go ahead and click download for that as well. And then, the, almost done here, we're gonna download OSYSCAL 6. Now this is basically a plugin that you're gonna be using and the main purpose of this is once you do all the stuff that we're gonna do throughout this video and we get our Vita running Enzo, if you're on a 3.65 firmware, but let's say you wanna play a game that requires a newer firmware, this plugin is going to allow you to play that so you don't have to upgrade your Vita and lose your modification. So you can go ahead and download this as well just by clicking that file. And matter of fact, go ahead and download the one right below it as well. So get both of those links. And last but not least, we're gonna need the PS Vita firmware for 3.65. Now here's gonna be a link. The website is dartsterney.net slash ps-vita-firmwares. Scroll down till you see complete official firmwares. Once you get there, click next on the bottom and scroll over until you find 3.65. Go ahead and click on 3.65. It should open up a mega load or a mega load link. And from there, just go ahead and begin downloading. So click on save and it should start to download. Now I've already downloaded this in the past, so I already have it saved here. Okay, now once we have all of those things, we wanna just go ahead and show that in folder. We wanna grab all of these files, okay? right click cut and we're going to go into that new folder we created and paste them in there and the only reason we do this is just to keep everything nice neat and organized okay so first up here what we're going to do is we're going to extract the final he volume now if you don't have a windows extractor guys you can go ahead and head over to rarlab.org and download a free version of winrar to download this just click on downloads and get the one that is english 64 bit download that go ahead and install it on your computer that way you have a file extractor i already have this installed so i'm not going to do that i'm going to go ahead and light that out so once you have an extractor available you're going to double click on this file and you're going to extract all of these into the same folder okay so you can see it created a folder finally there you go once we have this folder and we have this you're going to right click 
and click run as administrator. Click yes, and this should be ready to go. If you get a Windows Defender asking you to go ahead and allow this, go ahead and click allow. Now, it, this tutorial is assuming that you guys have plugged your Vita into your computer at any point in time. If you have not plugged your computer into, or if you've not plugged your Vita into your computer at any point in time in the past, you're gonna need to download another file called QCMA. I'm gonna link that in the description as well, but I'll go ahead and show you guys that as well. That way you guys know what you need. So once you get over to QCMA's website, just scroll down and click on the Windows installer. When you get that on the bottom, it's about a 60 megabit file. Go ahead and extract that or open it up and then go ahead and proceed to installing that. Now I already have QCMA installed so I don't need to have this up and running, but if you guys don't have this, make sure you have it so that your computer recognizes your Vita. So at this point we have every file we need, we have everything we need, and we're pretty much ready to just go and modify the Vita. So now let's head over to the Vita. We're going to connect our Vita to the computer. So all you gotta do is use a micro USB cable if you're using the slim one or use the proprietary cable that came with a fat one if you're using that. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so once you have your Vita, you're just gonna go ahead and plug your USB cable into this. Go ahead and open up Content Manager. Click on copy content. And this is what you should see. Okay, once you have this exact screen open, then let's go back to the computer. All right guys, so once you plug in, you could see that Final Encore has detected that it's connected to a 3.73 PS Vita. We're gonna select the trim H Encore to seven megabits, and we're gonna go ahead and hit let's go. All right, once that is finished, do not close out on this application, but we're gonna head back over to the PS Vita and do the next steps from there. Okay, so back over on the Vita, we're gonna select PC to PS Vita system. I'm gonna click on applications. I'm gonna click PS Vita. We're gonna select HN Core 2, and we're gonna click copy. Hit okay. We're gonna let it do its copying, and then from there, we're going to modify the Vita. All right. Click on the home button, exit out. Now you should see you have HN Core 2 installed. Go ahead and click on it, press start, click yes. Okay, and you should see some options here. We're gonna click install Hinkaku. And we're also gonna do download Vita Shell. All right, once we're done, we can go ahead and exit out of this by clicking the exit button. And let's go over to our settings and make sure that we can see Hinkaku settings on there. See, we have Hinkaku settings. You want to make sure that you have Enable Unsafe Homebrew checked. Make sure that's checked. And go ahead and exit out of this. And now, let's click on Vita Shell. Go ahead and click Start. Alright. So as you can see, in Vita Shell we are in, and then press Select. Once you press select, you should see it say USB connected. Now, if you're using a PSTV at this point and you have to be on a file TP server, instead of using USB, you'll press triangle, or sorry, you'll actually press uh, start, and you'll change the select button to work with FTP instead of USB. So in this video, we're using USB. We're gonna keep it on USB and just go from there, okay? Once you do this and it's connected to your computer, your computer should open up a new folder. All right guys, so back over on the computer, you could see I opened up. Now I had some leftover stuff on this because um, I've obviously modified this Vita a gazillion times. So you can see I've got a bunch of different files in inside here that you will not have. The main thing you wanna make sure is that you can at least see an app folder, license folder, music, picture, and all these other ones that you will normally not see. And to give you an idea of what I mean by that is if you uncheck hidden items, this is all you're gonna see. You're not gonna see the other ones. You're not even gonna see retro arch ROMs because you guys probably won't have that on yours. So make sure that your hidden items is enabled like the first step we did earlier in the video. Just make sure that's enabled properly. That way you can see all the stuff. Now inside this, well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the other folder that we created the other moment and we're gonna copy over Midoru to this, okay? Let's go over and copy over Midoru. I already have it, so I'm going to just replace it anyways. And once we have Midoru inside there, we are going to go back to the Vita and run it. Okay, so back on the Vita, go ahead and disconnect, scroll down, 
and let's install Maduro. Alright, once that's installed, let's exit out and you should see Maduro is now on the live screen. Okay, so on screen here you can see that my current firmware is 3.73 and my factory firmware is 3.65. That means when Sony went ahead and manufactured this, it shipped out of the factory with the 3.65 firmware. This is the absolute lowest I can downgrade this Vita to. Once you go ahead and just run the application, it'll create a folder on your Vita, which is where you're going to copy over the firmware that we downloaded. So go ahead and exit out of this. Let's go back into Vita Shell, click Start, and then hit Select again. So let's head back to the PC. All right, so back over on the PC, you should see the same folders here. Go into App, and you should see Maduro created a folder there when we ran it. Open up that folder, and inside this folder, we're going to be copying over the firmware that we downloaded earlier. So to get that to work, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this PS Vita official firmware. We're going to extract only the one that just says zip with it. You don't want the one that says pre or system data. Go ahead and click extract and hit OK. That should have created another folder. You can see there's the folder. And it basically has another one that you need to extract. we got to get down to the psp 2 updatepup file. Go ahead and extract that as well. And that should be in yet another folder. Once we have this, now we can take this and copy this over to Maduro folder. So just go ahead and drag and drop it. All right, now once that is copied over, you can close this out and let's head back to the Vita. We're now going to proceed to downgrading the Vita. All right, once the copying is complete, go ahead and X out of this. Let's open up Maduro again, hit start. Now, if you see the screen where it says disable all your plugins first and you keep getting this, the simplest way to fix this is just to restart the Vita. So in this case, I'm going to restart the Vita as well. And you can leave it unplugged as well. All right, once your Vita is rebooted, you're going to head over. You're going to first start by remodding it. So you're going to have to click on HN Core. Just open the application. and just click exit. Now for some of you guys who get your Vita to go into a reboot mode or it just crashes whenever you open up HN Core, that is absolutely normal. Keep doing it until it works. That's part of the success rate with 3.73. Once we've done that, without clicking anything else, go straight into Midoru. Go ahead and click start. And now you should see the, the following options. So it can, you can see that it says target firmware 3.65. We're gonna go ahead and hit X to confirm. It's going to take 20 seconds before it decides to go forward. Once 20 seconds is up, go ahead and click X again, and it should start to downgrade. It's important not to touch anything at this point and not to restart the Vita either. The Vita is going to do everything on its own. All right, that says, do you want to transfer? And that's in case if you have a memory card, just go ahead and click no for that. So at this point, the first thing we want to do is verify that we are actually on the right firmware. Go into your start settings. Go into system, system information, and you could see we are now on 3.65. Okay, exit out. Now we want to get rid of all of these apps that we installed for 3.73. Now since we're running on 3.65 and that is not the latest firmware, anytime you try and connect your Vita to the PC, it's basically going to prompt you to update your system. This is a very annoying situation and can be confusing to folks, but here's a really, really easy solution to fix it. Go into your settings, scroll over to network, go into your Wi-Fi settings, make sure you're connected to your know, Wi-Fi of your choice. We're going to go into advanced settings. We're going to change our DNS server to or settings to manual and inside we're going to enter the following DNS server 212.47.229.76 once yours looks like that go ahead and hit OK back out and at this point what we want to do is restart the Vita 
So go ahead and power it off and reboot your Vita. All right, now we're gonna connect the Vita to the PC again. So very simple, click on Content Manager, go ahead and click Copy Content, and plug in your Vita to your PC again. Click on PC, USB cable. Once you see this, you should be ready to go. Now in case you get a connection error or for whatever reason it doesn't connect, on your PC, just go and open the final HNCore file again and make sure that's ready to rock and roll. Once that's ready to go, you should be easily getting back to the screen because sometimes it can be a little bit buggy. But anyways, once you see the screen, we're gonna head back to the computer. Okay, so back on the computer, we're gonna open up that folder we created. We're gonna go back in Final Heave. We're gonna right click and run as administrator. Click yes. So at this point, when you're able to see your Vita show up with 3.65 on there, make sure you select trim on core to seven MB and go ahead and click let's go. So the similar process to what we did last time, we're just gonna do the exact same thing, except it's now going to install the compatible version of H on core into your Vita. Now, if you get an error like this where it said fail to unpack, all you have to do is restart your Vita and do the same step over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the background and then I'll meet you guys back up here. Okay, so after a quick reboot, it worked completely fine. We're just gonna head back over to the Vita and we'll proceed from there. All right, so once that is done on the computer, you're gonna click PC to PS Vita system, applications, PS Vita, and we're gonna install H on core. Go ahead and click copy, click okay. Once that is complete, let's go ahead and exit out of this. So once H on core is installed, sometimes you'll have issues booting it up where it just won't open up right away. So as you can see here, I'm gonna try and open it up without doing anything, but it just crashes and goes right back to the home screen. So when you have that error happen, press and hold R1 and then open and launch H on core. And that should fix your issues. And there you go. Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install in Kaku and we're going to re-download a Vita shell. So make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi for the step and once that is complete, we'll back out of this. Great. Now we can go ahead and exit, open up Vita Shell, go ahead and hit start, and press select. Now we need to plug it in back to the computer. All right, let's go back to the computer and proceed to next steps from there. All right, guys, once we've connected our Vita and had Vita Shell open, we are pretty much towards the end of the video at this point. Just got a few more steps to do, and then you guys are done. So here's the folder that we had created originally in the beginning of the video. We're gonna take those two files that we downloaded, the OSIS Cal 6s, just copy both of these, and we're gonna paste that into the Thai folder. So right, open up Thai, go ahead and paste it in there. Next, we're gonna back out. We're gonna take our enzo.vpk and copy that into the root of the Vita as well. Once those two files are finished connecting, at this point, we are done using our PC and we can go ahead and disconnect from here. All right, as the files have finished copying, we can go ahead and cancel out of this. And you'll see, we're gonna be able to actually install our Enzo. So go into UXO, scroll all the way down, and you should see that Enzo VPK. Click to install it. Click yes. And now we can exit out once it's installed and you should see the app pop up. There you go, there is Enzo. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up Enzo and you see that it's called Molecule. And this is really, really tiny font, but basically it says that this is a permanent modification to your Vita and press circle to accept the term. Once you click circle, you're gonna to proceed to the next step. And again, in super tiny font, we're gonna install, it says press cross, go ahead and press cross, which is X and let it do its thing. Great, once it's done, it says press any key to reboot. All right, once you see that logo while rebooting, you know that you are in Enzo. You're not gonna see the Sony PlayStation logo anymore, you're gonna see that every time you reboot. That means you have Enzo installed. And just to verify, we just rebooted the system. We'll go into settings, and on start, and you can see Hankaku settings is already over there available. We'll scroll down to system, system information and you can see it says 3.65 with the Chinese letters next to it as well. Go ahead and close out and that pretty much concludes this guy so I'll catch you back up front.
And that is pretty much how you install Enzo. So it wasn't super hard. There are a few glitches or kind of issues that you come up with in between, especially when it concerns or pertains to installing HON core onto here. Sometimes you have some weird success rate issues with it, but if you just keep repeating the same exact step of running it, it works out fine. Nonetheless, we have a Vita here with an HN core installed and Enzo running on 3.65. As you guys recall, we started running the firmware on 3.73. And that's pretty much how you guys do this. So for some of you guys who are completely new to the Vita modding scene and don't know what are the benefits of modifying a Vita, basically you get to run your own kind of homebrew on it. You get to run emulators, run um, backups of PS Vita games. You can run an SD card as storage options instead of using the super expensive uh, proprietary memory card that comes with the PS Vita. So it just gives you a breadth of options of stuff that you can do with your Vita. Now, Again, if you guys had any issues, let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best. I might actually follow up this video with a, you know, let's call it a um, troubleshooting type guide. Because I know a lot of you guys ask me a bunch of questions on certain issues you're having during the, you know, your challenges with it while you're doing all your modifications and whatnot. And then some of you guys have been opting to send it to me as well. So if, if everything fails and you're not able to figure it out, guys, you can support me on Patreon in my highest tier and I can handle up to 10 people at once. To send over your Vitas to me and I modify it for you and send it back to you guys. Um, I've actually done it for a ton of people in the past. So there's a bunch of people out there that are actually really happy with the service that they've gotten for me. So again, it's just leaving it out there for you guys to realize that there is an option for me to do that for you. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm on my road to getting 100,000 subscribers, pretty close to there and a little past halfway. So any support and every support that you guys give definitely does help. If you like the video and you're new to the channel, please go ahead and consider subscribing as well while you're here. And that's pretty much all that I have. Remember, there's links in the description for all the files that we downloaded today and everything that you're going to need to get up and running. I and mean, then you can follow some of my other tutorials on how to add some of the homebrew applications that are worth it. And I just made those, you know, earlier this month. So it should be pretty good for you guys. Anyways, it was awesome doing this. Thank you very much for staying through to the end of this video. And I will see you all on my next one. Take care and bye-bye. Peace out.